a pretty cast fragrance. What would you think that would smell like? Gunpowder? Bomb. <laughs> Explodey. Uh, well, well, perhaps bomb perhaps is... a bit of a scarf. Maybe. That is kind of a thing now. Been... Yeah, welcome to Printed Cast Roundtable, a casual weekly show where we talk about what we've been up to and the various gaming-related stuff from over the last week. We're your hosts. I'm Chris. This is Mike. Hello. And Grover's finally on that move that's been on and off for like a month and a half. He's finally oh, wow. getting it done, so he should be back by next week. It depends on how fast they get an internet at the new place. So, And of course, Edna's chatting with us through text messages. She's actually back this week after we had our little spiel last week, but uh, uh, that's not going to be the last of it. I've already spotted some stories that just make my skin crawl with what the heck is wrong with society. Uh, just throwing that out there. I had kind of not paid a lot of attention to the Anaconda Nicki Minaj music video and song that's apparently a big hit. There are multiple feminist groups that are praising it. I am floored at how wrong that is. <laughs> Uh, on, well, anyway, uh, what have we been playing this week? So we don't get back into that crap. <laughs> uh, pretty much the same as <gasps> usual. You know, a World of Warcraft, no Diablo, some Hearthstone. Played a little bit more Azure Striker Gunvolt just to realize that the first level that you are given in the game is a cakewalk compared to the others. Because I got through that level without getting hit, but maybe once or twice. The next few levels are just, I'm, I'm constantly getting barraged and I can't seem to avoid it. But I think it has more to do with the, the awkward smallness of the original. 3DS and how it doesn't fit properly into my hands. It might, it might. And then uh, also, outside of my comfort zone, I wasn't the actual person playing. I was sitting next to my girlfriend while she was playing, and we were both, I guess you could say, playing together. Mm. Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, I've heard of this, but I don't know a lot about it. I just know the overall setting more than anything. So in Five Nights at Freddy's, you are the lone security guard of a Chuck E. Cheese-like establishment called Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. The restaurant uses animatronics, much like Chuck E. Cheese's, only they are allowed to roam around at night. Oh, kind of like a horror version of the Night at the Museum. Okay. The main part of the story, which I won't get into, is given to you through things that you can see th- from your security office, uh, through the video cameras, little newspaper clippings and posters and things like that that you can find uh, if you look close enough. The actual gameplay itself revolves around trying to keep these animatronics out of your office because they will come in and kill you. <laughs> You cannot leave your office. There is no moving around and hiding and doing any of this stuff that these other horror games do. You are stuck in your office. Only defense you have is your video camera, two light switches, and two door switches, which work left and right side, respectively. Your light switches are used to check camera blind spots, and your door switches are used. If they get to the door, you can't keep them out that way. So it's almost more of a puzzle game than anything. It is sort of like a puzzle horror game. Um, I will tell you, I am not much for horror games because my imagination... is the kind that I'll be walking down a hallway in a place I'm very familiar with in the middle of the night and there's, you know, it's dark because it's night but I'll have that there's something behind me going on in the back of my head. Mm. And there's nothing there, of course. That's the kind of person that I am. (laughs) So... (laughs) This game is complete nightmare fuel for me. It is awful. Like, I wasn't the one controlling the cameras and trying to find the the moving animatronics, which don't move when you're looking at them through the camera, by the way. Oh, a little bit of Doctor Who angel stuff in there, too. Exactly, yes. It's a, it's a lot like the weeping angels in Doctor Who. They do not move when you're looking at them. Or if you want to get more basic, the booze from Mario. <laughs> it, there you go. The booze okay. from Mario will work, too. Uh, but still, nightmare fuel. I take it this is not something that you'll be watching again? Uh, or are you kind of drawn to it anyway? I'm kind of drawn to it. I find the story fascinating. Uh, there's just enough there to where your creative side of your mind is like, this might be because of this, or this could be because of that, or this <laughs> this means this. You know, there's just enough there to be something, but not enough there to be anything. You know, this is cohesively 100% the plot line. That's all you need to know. Mm-hmm. It's, there's just enough there to give you an idea of what's going on, but not enough there to tell you, yes, that is what is going on. So, but that's, ah, it's <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> it's, it's really scary. If you love scary games, it's only five dollars on Steam. I would recommend it because it is very nightmare fuel for me personally. May not be for everybody, but it is for me. Uh, what have you been playing this week? I can't really say much myself. I did a little bit of congregate stuff. Always got the tie in thing going on. Pretty much majority of my gaming is right there, but I did spend a little bit of time, like fifteen minutes here, half hour there, with Deadlight and Counter Strike, King of Fighters thirteen, and the Bridge, and then uh, one of the newer games that I picked up in a collection, and it's called Meltdown, which is a little indie game that's strangely addictive for a game style that's not exactly my 
favorite. It's very repetitive. It's very simple. It's kind of like a top-down arena shooter mixed with a little bit of that randomly generated, okay, barely randomly generated dungeon crawler type stuff. Only there's there's no loot. You're basically just supposed to get from point A to point B and kill everything. And then at the end, you get your experience points and your money and whatever, and you upgrade, and then you do it again. It's, yeah, it's it's kind of like an old-school arcade game in a lot of ways, and maybe that's what's drawing me to it. Because it's something I can get in five, ten minutes of a level here, and then I can turn it off and go do something else. So it's a nice little distraction between those few moments of the day when you know you have a time to sit but not actually do anything. So those games keep me coming back a lot of time. As a matter of fact, that may be part of why I like fighting games. You can get into one for like ten minutes, leave it, and you don't have to worry about save points or anything like that. And I did peek into my RPG Maker project for the first time in like a month and a half. It's been <laughs> it's been before I left Oregon. And it's got a promising start. I just need to get some motivation start digging back into that thing. It's, I don't know. I don't know what do happened. It. Do it. Do <laughs> it. It will come back someday, I'm sure. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm thinking about posting a few things just so I can, even if I have to private it on the channel and just show the people I know, just to kind of say, hey, this is what I'm working on to get some feedback. Maybe it'll get me going again. I don't know. Little demo. Yeah. But uh, that's pretty much all there is to that. Now, three small topics. There's been some interesting stuff that's happened this week, but nothing really, like, amazing. But uh, what I'm, we alluded to with the intro is that uh, Microsoft had this... Okay, everybody knows about Destiny by now, whether you like it or not, whether you think it's a Halo knockoff or whatever the case may be. It's, it's funny, it's made by the same people. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. It's definitely going to be one of the major games for, I think it's supposed to be out this year. So, at least by the holiday season and into the next year. Doesn't it come out in like a few weeks? Is it? I keep thinking it's like the end of the year, like November. I'm pretty sure it comes out this month. You can tell how excited I am. I don't even know when it comes out. <laughs> uh, this isn't a crack against Destiny. I've seen some nice stuff from it. Sony basically has an exclusivity deal with them. I do not know how long that's supposed to last, but pretty much everything is for the PlayStation 1 at this... Whoop, wrong system. Uh, PlayStation 4 at the moment. So That's reaching back. <laughs> yeah. I blame the Xbox naming team, which is apparently the same team Nintendo's using lately. But um, Microsoft apparently had some issues with being told they couldn't advertise the fact that it's supposed to be coming to their system relatively soon. We don't know exactly when yet. So they made this little kind of parody of Calvin Klein clone perfume type stuff with a little thing called the New Fragrance by Xbox and it's got this bottle of Destiny we'll put it up up there so you guys can see it and it caused a little bit of a controversy simply because of the fact that they had been asked not to advertise and technically this was an advertisement so I don't think the advertisement was even up for much more than 24 hours probably even 12 and uh, it's already been taken down so don't go looking for it but it ticked some people off and that's got people kind of questioning the at what point do companies uh, how to wear this? This is a story I'm throwing at the last minute, so I'm kind of screwing up here. But basically, when you have an exclusivity contract, which I do not mind, I would rather games kind of be I spread do. out with everybody else. I think the more the merrier. But at the same time, a little bit of exclusivity, it can be okay. It kind of draws an audience to a particular game system. Exclusivity doesn't do anything but help the primary release platform sell in their systems. That's the only thing it's good for. I'm strongly against it, except in the instance of first-party titles, which naturally are going to be exclusives. But nine However, times out of ten, when it gets released on another system, it gets an upgrade of some sort. It's it's still, it doesn't, I think it's a stupid idea. I, I don't like third-party exclusivity. It's it's There's there's just no place for it. There, there's not. I mean, by the time you get your release to the platform that somebody might want it on, because I mean, the economy's not so great where I'm going to go out and drop $400 on a PlayStation 4 just because Destiny is going to be out on it first. Ooh, mm-hmm. I mean, Destiny looks okay. Not super excited for it, but even if I was, I probably wouldn't go get a PlayStation 4 just for that. Just like I really want to play No Man's Sky. It's not been announced for anything but PlayStation 4. I am not going to go get a PlayStation 4 just so I can play No Man's Sky. And it will be multi-release. PC and Xbox One will get it eventually. That, that was a couple weeks ago. That this was the last time I looked and it, had, yeah. it hadn't said yet. But uh, by the time you get around to releasing the game on the platform of choice for some people, what goes through my mind is, well, I've already waited this long. I might as well wait for the price to drop. So now you're making <laughs> less money off of me than you could have when the game was being really hyped up. You see where I'm going? It, it I definitely help. do, but I'm afraid that you're usually in the minority because it seems like there's too many people that grab onto a console, usually whatever one they buy first, and they hold a loyalty to it. A little too doggedly most of the time because I'm like you. I'm one of those type of people that it's not necessarily about the console, it's about the games. If there's a game I would really, really enjoy so much that I buy a console for and I, if I can afford it, I would buy it. For example, I have no interest in a Wii U whatsoever. Smash Brothers, if I had the money, I would buy it simply for that game. And see, I'm I'm the same way, sort of. 
I buy the console based on the history with the franchise on the console. Mm. I grew up with a Nintendo, so naturally I have a stronger relationship to Nintendo games as far as my gaming patterns go. I love Zelda, I love Mario, I love Star Fox, I love Metroid. So my first pick will always be a Nintendo system. But I will usually get a secondary system at the very least just so I can play, you know, different set of games on it. Mm -hmm. But if it comes out for, let's say, both Xbox One and the Wii U and PC, I'll probably get it for PC. (laughs) (laughs) Unless it's something that I think Sydney might want to play and then I'll get it for a system that we can both enjoy it on. Mm -hmm. But here's part of the related part of the story itself. If you have a company that has an exclusivity contract with one particular other company, even though they are going to release it eventually for somebody else, does that other company, in this case Microsoft, have a right to basically poke fun at the very people they want on their console? Is in this kind of dangerous territory, like, well, if you won't let us, we'll do it anyway, and we'll do it this way. Well, I mean, they could poke a... They, I, I don't see it as them having or not having the right. I see it more as them making a good or bad business decision. And in this case, if Bungie found the advertisement to be offensive, I think it was a bad business decision. I haven't heard too much about it yet. It, it just happened today, so I just know that Microsoft did remove it, and apparently Activision has something to do with... So, And does Activision actually own Bungie at this point, or are they just publishing the game for them? I don't know. I don't remember anything about any acquiries going on, so I think they're just publishing. Anywho, I don't see Bungie tying themselves to a major a major player again. Not after what happened that's, before, no. Yeah, that's that's how they lost Halo, so... But two other topics we'll get to real quick. Uh, one of them is PewDiePie, who's uh, basically a YouTube superstar gamer who's reached over 30 million subscribers this week, as a matter of fact. Must be lies. Jeez. This week, he also announced that he was taking off the comments for his channel for good. Now, he's complained about issues with it for a long time because he's such a spotlighted individual in the community. There's a lot of people that will use his channel for self-promotion because, you know, the higher they are on his comments list, the more likely they're going to get seen. People are going to click, watch your stuff, of course. And therefore, there's other kind of spamming, and there's a lot of fights that start up with various flaming incidents that happens, and he just got tired of the drama, especially when he used it so much for specifically talking to the people on there. So he said he's dropping it. He's going to be contacting people largely through stuff like Reddit and Twitter now. Now that's that's understandable. At first, when I heard the story, I thought I kind of rolled my eyes, thinking this is another one of those people that couldn't take the criticism that was being trajected toward him. But I watched the video he talked about this. I've heard other people's uh, comments about how this is working, and I kind of understand. I agree with him, especially with you have a channel that's getting as many views as he does. You know, there's got to be thousands of comments on there, and it makes it hard to read them all, especially when most of the ones you actually re- want to respond to is one out of a hundred. So the people that he would want to respond to are probably the ones that would actually bother going to a place like Reddit or some other forum that he sets up to communicate with his fans. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that he'd probably want to respond to anyway. Definitely. But yeah, it works. It works. And if more people are doing that, I know I gave Sarkeesian a little bit of a kick because she did the same thing. But you know, if she's doing something similar, I can completely understand her reasons for that. So I kind of retract my statement from last week if that is the case with hers. But it doesn't seem to be, but I'm not 100% informed yet. So, And the other topic, increasing problem with Kickstarter-funded games and games featured on Steam's early access stuff. Uh, production teams will release an early buy alpha or beta, and then within a few months, practically ban- vanish off the face of the earth. I almost said BAMF. Nightcrawler fans, there you go. But um, a widely reported recent incident was uh, Super Crits, The Stomping Land, which it looks like Valve, and there's not been any official statement, but it looks like Valve's actually pulled it from the Steam store because they can't get a hold of Super Crit or any of its development teams. So they pulled the game from the, the store itself. If you've already bought into it, you can still play it, of course. They're not doing anything about that. But it does make me a little fearful that, you know, I'm all for indie gaming. I'm all for giving people a platform to get into gaming easier. Not all games are going to be fantastic in their own right. I'm not against small budgets. I'm not against small development. But I do have to worry that this is something that is very similar to what we saw in the Atari age, when we were so buried under a whole bunch of different video games that it was hard to tell the good ones from the bad ones anymore. It was just so much crap, so much unfinished games being claimed as actual full projects, which thankfully doesn't happen very often yet, but it could get to that point. And does that mean that stuff like indie games and the fact that we have so many big companies trying to release multiple AAA titles in any given year, are we swamping the community with too many video games? I think early access needs to go. I don't like the idea of it. You're funding a game which could potentially never be finished. Well, that's great for developers that you know, like a concept was on Kickstarter, uh, Double Fine was on Kickstarter. That's that's fine. You know, you could trust those guys. Wasn't even WayForward? Didn't they do 
Shantae with that? I'm thinking they did. Uh, that, I, that I don't know. I, that, that was before I really started paying any kind of attention to Kickstarter. I kind of have a fondness for those guys. I'm not entirely sure why, but... Way forward? Yeah. yeah. They try hard. They they actually love what they do. They, fact, they they're do. Coming out they they a, love the things that they do, so... For anybody that kind of liked uh, what they did with Duck Hunt... I mean, Duck Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Duck Tales. Duck Tales and uh, Double Dragon, they actually picked up the Nickelodeon version of the Ninja Turtles that they're going to turn into a Metroidvania, so... Hmm. Could be that, interesting. That would... Uh, mm, ah. Sorry, another sidetrack there. <laughs> It's all right. It's a good sidetrack. Now, a lot of people would say, well, they're warned ahead of time these are early access games, therefore you're not buying for the full game. If they complete it, that's good, but, you know, they may have troubles, things may fall apart. And after the incident with Yogg's cast with their own personal game, I think it's come to the more to the forefront of the media community and gamers at large that this stuff is probably going to happen quite a bit these days, especially since crowdsourcing is still popular, but it's not quite the giant it was, I don't think. The fad part of it has disappeared. Now we're in more in the territory territory that probably last a while. And then we have stuff like um, Star Citizen, which, what is it, up to now $53 million, and we still don't officially have a game yet? It's going to happen. I'm not worried about that one in particular, but it has taken a long time, and there has been a lot of setbacks, and if this happens again, would we have a uprising if $50 million got thrown at a project that nobody ever got to see? Probably. That, I believe, is uh, safe to assume, yes. Of course, it would definitely also mean the end of that person's career, but they probably got to keep $20 million of that. <laughs> So what do they care? <laughs> right. Yeah, anyways, a couple of food for thought incidents here. You can follow us on Twitter at Printycast with a little at sign. And you can contact us via email at printycast at gmail.com. Our game news is going to be pretty sh- small, this sh- sh- small, sh- pretty small this week. So uh, we'll catch you all next time. Rover should be back. See you next time. Later, dudes. Later, dudes.